Rafa Cooler, Quake Legends. Household names in certain countries and certain households, but certainly many more than that as we get into the grand final of the PGL Quake Champions Open. And it's all come down to this. This is going to be the big money, but more importantly, the big bragging rights. We don't get to see these guys go head-to-head -head very often. We got to once earlier in the weekend, and we've been blessed with the opportunity to watch them again, this time with a little bit more riding on the line. But here to take the ride with us, we've got Zoot and Jason Kaplan, or based on the way they're dressed, um, Tweedledee and Tweedle, uh, well... Jason. Well, oh, come on. I was the closest <laughs> one, too. You Tweedledee and Tweedle Handsome. <laughs> yeah, ride or die we here. So cost. nice we get to see this one twice. It's going to be good. I'm Fun hoping color. it's going to be good. It has to be good, right? It's cooler. It's Rafa. Does it get better than that? It's an insane I don't think it does. Match up. This, is, this is classic for multiple reasons. It's almost classic already in Quake Champions. These are absolute legends of the game. They've both been so influential in their play styles. Can't wait to get started. And, of course, this is going to be a best of five. We saw the best of three earlier here where... Um, not to, you know, take uh, any wind out of the sails here, but it was a 2-0 uh, for, for Cooler. Yeah, and actually most of the times they've met across, like, their entire mm. history, it's generally been very one-sided, 3-0s, 2-0s. I've had a couple of, like, you know, 3-1s, 2-1s, but this is going to be an interesting match because both of these players have been just increasing in skill level, increasing in play as we've gotten on through this tournament, and we're at the end. So clearly, they both have to be at their maximum power level. they got nothing else left here. I'm feeling there's some crazy momentum going on from Cooler. He seemed to storm ahead towards the end of the series versus Kilson. It was a pretty fast and furious ride. I wonder if he can take that same pace into the game See, versus Rafa. That's my question on this, right? Is um, You know, you look at traditional sports, and exhaustion is always something that comes into play. You know, you're playing for 90 minutes or 20 minutes, and it takes a lot out of you. Playing games like Quake, where it's very mentally intensive, Cooler already playing four maps in that best of five. Is he going to be a little bit worn out? I would imagine not, just for the fact that he plays like 20 I, hours a day. I think also you, there's the warming down period for Rafa, yeah. which is also exhausting in its own way because you've got time to kind of... You're still doing your research. You're watching the next game anyway, right. and you're kind of just... It, it's, it's exhausting in anticipation of the game as well. So I really think there's... They might be approaching it from two different sides, but equally. It's absolutely a factor, but when you're coming to a LAN tournament, that's mm -hmm. something you just have to deal with as part of the environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, of course, as, as you said there, Zoot, um, these guys are able to maintain momentum for quite some time. They're both veterans of this kind of atmosphere yeah. as well. Uh, I was feeling a little bit bad during the ter the interview with Cooler, where you know he took a smoke break, and you can tell he was already... He, he, we, we didn't even talk about the last matchup. We didn't talk about yeah. the semifinal with him and Kilson. It was like, okay, done, neat, close the book on that, get ready for the matchup against Rafa. And the fact that Cooler's taking it that seriously means he's not kind of resting on the laurels of the previous two O's. Well, again, like if we look at the entire of Quake Champions, Cooler's won one land technically. I say technically because it wasn't like a tier one. It wasn't no, premier it wasn't. tournament. It was a medium March land, um, which he won, which is just mostly against people in yeah. Russia and like Bel and Belarusia. Um, and then he played in the second one and lost to Cypher in the grand finals. So this is his like big chance, his big breakthrough. Rafa's done it in twos with the hang. So it's not like this is a new thing for him. Exactly. And to be honest, it's been a long time since Cool has had a result like this in Quake. This is a really... As we were talking about in the interview, the dedication that he's put into the game, this is absolutely massive for him. And the amount of years, this guy's been so dedicated to the game in general for the last 20 years. So I think he's buzzing for a chance to win. And it'd be a huge way to mark his career at like the age he's got in this game. Yeah, and it was very difficult to predict that it would come down to this final. Uh, results in this tournament have been honestly a little bit all over the map. But also, all of the players have been coming from all over the world. I mean, it's been such an international LAN. And unfortunately, at this point, we have waved goodbye to literally everybody else besides Cooler and Rafa. Let's bring up that playoff bracket one more time, as uh, it just seems like, well, actually, it seems like a very long time ago now that we started these playoffs. But now we're just down to the grand finals. Uh, so yeah, I mean, Claus and Razy was such a, a cerebral matchup. Um, we saw Razy take a fantastic map, and I actually was really thinking that Razy could take it. That was a phenomenal game, actually. That totem, though. <laughs> oh, my God. That, um, that was thing heartbreaking. Is, uh, I, feel, I feel bad for him just in the fact that if you think about like a lot of his big moments and his big games, like against Rafa, losing someone in the last few seconds, now against Claws, hitting a totem at the last second, he's had a rough ride. He has, but at the same time, the, the level that he plays at, he's always exceeding expectations, and he's already had to take down Cypher twice here yeah. at PGL. So he's had an insane result. He obviously would have loved to have gone further, and he only had his sights set on the victory, but uh, nonetheless, he 
couldn't have lost to a much better player, really. But all of that really just speaks to how well-prepared Rafa is for this grand final, taking down Claus, who had taken down Razy, who had previously taken down uh, Cooler Cypher twice. Yeah. Yeah, and he also beat Cooler. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you, you really wonder how much theory crafting you can do about that. But this is not such an easy, like, rock, paper, scissors scenario. You're looking more at different play styles, as we've seen many of those come into play over the course of the tournament. And even play styles changing from round to round or even within a single round. Exactly. Actually, that's a really good point because if you look at Claus, Rafa, and Cooler, just because Rafa beat Claus and Claus beat Cooler doesn't mean Rafa can beat Cooler because Claus' style is way more aggressive than anything Cooler is going to throw out. Cooler is going to yeah. be a lot more passive, a lot more reserved in his play. And then Rafa, he has to be that guy that adjusts from playing super aggressive to playing super passive and to deal with these different styles. And I think that's going to show how good of a player Rafa is because we know him to be able to do that. I mean, it's all in the mind at that point. You're you're looking deep into your opponent's brain and you're mm -hmm. trying to inspect what is this guy going to do next. They have got a history together. They know how each other can play. I, is anyone actually going to bring up any surprises and make some of those, uh, those I don't know, those crazy pushes, those aggressions, those triple peaks or whatever you want and show that actually they're not doing their typical passive or defensive play style that Cooler so often has? Short answer, yes, we can yes, expect that. Yes. It's going to happen. It's going to be an <laughs> insane series. Uh, I, I really do think that in the two woes that Cooler has taken down Rafa, you look at a score like that and you're like, oh, well, Cooler just wiped the floor with him. But those individual maps and those individual rounds were so incredibly close. It came down to just very minute details that, you know, resulted in frags, which resulted in Cooler taking it. But I think in a best of five series, we're going to see, you know, the long game here. I think that these guys overall in the playoffs have actually looked very similar in terms of strength, just in the kind of style that they managed to win their, their matches. I mean, I don't want to jinx it. No, I think I think you're right. Like, Cooler on day one and Raph on day one, looking at them now, are completely different. Mm. Like, they are uh, playing a completely different level than at the beginning of the tournament. And that's why this match is going to be so unpredictable on who's actually going to win. Yeah, and I think the uh, the picks and bands is something I'm incredibly looking forward to seeing because it's going to be important there to die. And in fact, here, right on cue, we're going to have Cooler banning out Keel. Rafa is going to ban out Visor, in fact. So uh, I That's think that interesting. both mm. the players have actually been using Death Knight a lot. Both are very, very strong in it. I'd say respectively, in their own regions, the best Death Knight players. Well, the, that makes it even more interesting in this is the fact that Rafa said his best champion is Visor. So he even takes it away from himself because he has that much respect for Cooler's Visor. And as we've seen so many times over the course of the tournament, Cooler has a habit or a general strategy of making a frag and then going into deep hiding, not going maybe passive. I, I'm not sure I would use the word there, but uh, strategic <laughs> <laughs> and really trying to sandbag. And Rafa himself has banned Visor, which means there's no opportunity to you know, track him down very quickly if Cooler wants to go into hiding. At the same time, Cooler banning Keel. We've seen a lot of Keel in the tournament, and I'm a big fan of Keel, but I wouldn't be the one to say that Keel has been a game changer for anybody this weekend. Yeah, I'd agree. I, I mean, we heard Rafa talk earlier on against his match versus Claws, and he said he just wanted to play Mirror versus Claws. He didn't really care about <laughs> bringing out the Keel because we asked him specifically, why not use Keel since you talked about think, it so much? I think Razy's the best Keel player we've seen so far, but yeah. we obviously eventually know what happened to him. Although he made an impact with it, he's obviously not a champion that's lived through. Not like his clutch. Definitely um, not like his clutch. Well, he, he beat Cypher with clutch and without. So It's true. Sure. But either way, in the end, I feel like Cooler banned a champion that I don't think Rafa relies on. Yeah, I agree. And Rafa banned a champion that he might need to counter Cooler. Maybe. I mean, the thing is, Cooler could have banned away Death Knight, seen Rafa playing DK earlier on, but then he's also banning away a champion he wants to play. Yeah. So maybe he just went for something that was very unique to Rafa without affecting his own champion pool. It's interesting. We, we spend like, you know, five minutes talking about it up here, and when, you know, we could just ask them and they would just yeah. tell us immediately. <laughs> and I'm sure we will, but we are going to be getting into maps as well. Awoken up first. Yeah, that's a, a pick from Rafa. I saw it went by so fast when it was with Kilsen and Cooler. I couldn't did. even <laughs> believe it. I'm a not six second frag. I don't I think, think Rafa is going to want to play it quite as fast as they were. He's going to be a bit more meticulous in the setup. The question you is really, have a choice? Are, are, are they going for the sort of Ranger, DK, BJ mm. lineup? Or are we going to get a Galena there? There's some component that kind of slows the game down. I mean, Rafa also had a really quick game for Sirius on it. We won 3-1. Well, so. that was just... He won it, yeah, he won it quickly 3-1, but I felt like the rounds were a slightly slower pace. Um, but no, you're right, it was it was still rapid. 
And also, I mean, for people out there who are watching, I mean, I know we have quite a few people who maybe not play the game, maybe they're new to it, or maybe they do play and they're trying to, uh, you know, enjoy what's happening and maybe get better. There's no better opportunity than watching it right now between these two players. And if you actually don't even have the game, it's free to play. So you can Absolutely. literally just go download, get into the game, learn from what you get here, incorporate in your own, uh, your own play style, and try to improve and yep. see what you got. Besides the launcher, Steam, go and get it. And, of course, the, the biggest thing is always, you know, about improving your own play. And that's something that you can just track personally, game after game. And eventually it brings you someplace like here in the grand final. So. I mean, look at Rafa. He's, he's been grinding eventually. this game. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> in like five years. Uh, no. But the thing is, look at Rafa. Like, he never stops learning. He's yeah. been at the top for such a long time. He's played the game for such a long time. And yet he is still always learning as much as he possibly can to become that top player. That's why it's difficult to go to bed at a decent hour during these tournaments because it's just full of, you know, Conversating, I think, was a word that you you <laughs> did. I there, Jason. I think I heard that from you we're earlier. We're going, when the champion picks at the moment, I'm just curious: Are we going to be getting the Galena or not? I think it's just going to be a mirror, no matter I, what, I, for I, Rafa. I, even I, if Galena does come in. Looking. Do you think he'll mirror call him no matter what he picks? Yeah, I think he will. Unless unless he goes something crazy. It's got to be Galena. You can't not have. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But like you said, there's been a lot of learning from Rafa even during the course of this tournament, and you know, we hear a lot of conversation between him and Sirius and Dewey. Cooler has been kind of sequestering him a little, himself a little bit more. Uh, I think he has his own private villa out there somewhere, <laughs> and uh, he does show up um, in the mornings, but then he shows up here at the LAN, and the first thing he does is uh, sit down and get playing, and we're going to get playing right now, right here, on Awoken, Jason and Zoo, take us away. Thank you very much, Jihad. Jason, we're doing the grand final together. I am so excited for this. It looks like we're jumping into the game right now. Rafa going versus Caller. We're starting on Awoken. On Caller's point of view, it is already explosive. Maybe a la kill some Caller. The rocket, though, is going to land first blood within about 10 seconds. The pace has turned up, Jason. I almost feel like that's going to be a good showing of what this series is going to bring to to light here. Obviously, Cooler now with that initial frag might try to slow things down, but Rafa, who's, you know, we talk about Waz being a player who's so good at moving around the map. I feel like Rafa has been able to show a fantastic his ability to do that as well. But he's got the Ranger, and you have to respect that orb. You also have to respect um, the flame strike out of Cooler. He knows it's not up. The orb actually goes Whoa. through him here. Heavy was picked up by Cooler, but he's taking a lot oh. of damage. And actually, the suicide, suicides will come in off of hitting Rafa. Yeah, he does manage to get a direct on him. He stripped most of the armor away. But uh, Rafa is on good stead at the moment to go to the next mega health. He has got another ranger to look out for, but let's have a look. They're going to meet each other. Oh, he doesn't quite hit him. He might want to escape now. Mega health is up in two seconds' time, and there's no peak rail. Oh, actually. That timing. <laughs> he picked up mega right when that rail hit. It kept him alive through that shot. And now he's going to be very cautious to go towards heavy at all here. Really expecting Kua to be in this position. But he's going to be able to get above 90. He's going to get tagged up now. And he has one HP. Wow. And that's going to be all Cooler needs to finish him off. Insane rails that we're getting from Cooler. That's something that we were speaking about a, a little earlier. Cooler, is he able to go head to head with the rails from Rafa? He also showed how strong he was going against Claws. We got a little bit of totem damage happening. But here is the following mega health. Could be a drop. Hello, hello, hello. That's going to be Rockets. Orb comes in, but Cooler gets to turn on him despite having the disadvantage at the beginning. And Rafa easily could have went back for Omega, but he really wanted that fight. He really kind of had an idea of where Cooler was. And the drop down was great. It's just the shots did not connect. And more importantly, yeah. Cooler just hit some insane rockets. He did, I mean, he got a 55 damage rocket, then a 45. I think Rafa was hoping for direct, direct. Yeah. And that's kind of what he needed in that point. Despite that, guys, we move into round two, where we will follow Cooler. And uh, they've not had a frag in the first 10 seconds, so clearly aggressive <laughs> clearly slower, slowdown. Yeah, slower <laughs> paced game now here, boys. Um, let's see, though. You can see the rock jump come in from Rafa. Oh, oh my god, Cooler just decimates him, sends him down to hell, as Death Knight came from. I'm surprised Rafa's taking these kinds of risks. He knows that Cooler's going to be able to do that with the flame strike. Maybe he was expecting to pull the trigger a little sooner, but Cooler's being very quick. Just have to know when to be aggressive and when not to be oh, aggressive. This is true. And I've I'm, heard this before. Yeah, from someone. Someone <laughs> wise, wise. And you can see he's actually going to drop down yet again. The thing is, Cooler has the stack from Heavy. Rafa with the orb. Not going to be using it just yet, but he did so much damage off of that, that. That Heavy that Cooler just picked up means almost absolutely nothing. I feel like Rafa wasn't confident in the angle he could get with the orb. If it's not going to kill him, I'm not going to use it now. Because then I have to be on the run for about 20 seconds as Cooler is going to punish with that flame strike. Heavy Omega going to be up at relatively the same time. Again, Rafa being really cautious here, trying to challenge out against Cooler. More importantly, spot out where he is. 
Flame Strike going to be used. Doesn't really connect with too much damage, but they will trade items. And Rafa now knows, okay, I've got a window to work with here. I don't have to worry about his ability anytime soon, and I can try to make a play happen. And it looks like he might try from Tribal. Exactly. Cool, that's kind of stuck a banana, but Rafa is going to chase directly LG on LG. Cool, again, he's been so confident in the shots that he's hitting. This even an orb just to get feet away towards the light armor. Cool is going to back out knowing he's got Flame Strike in a few seconds time and can make a play potentially for heavy armor. And likewise, now knowing that Rafa doesn't have his orb, he can be even more aggressive here and not have that threat of instantly being popped like a balloon. Heavy, can he be picked up? And again, trading items between the two. But Rafa, still more importantly, he's going to be that man down. Important rail. Strike fear to call it. He's going to actually rocket jump up. All comes in as well, and it's a mutual frag at the end of it. Again, incredibly aggressive. What's that? They're testing each other in this. But Rafa's been relegated to his Galena now, a more typically defensive champion. I wonder how Cool is going to be approaching this. Well, we're going to find out here, luckily, in the next few minutes. Rafa already going to be down that first round. Heavy's trying to maybe go for the contest onto it. A second to back away. But yeah, I agree. Rafa's been so aggressive, more than we usually see out of him. A lot of these aggressive rocket jumps into his ability usage. But in general, Zoot, it doesn't look like it's been really working out for him. No, I mean, we talked about possible surprises that a player could throw in at the final. Maybe he's kind of just testing the waters and seeing what is going to work. Oh. He's going to have to possibly change. This could hurt a lot. He's stuck in the air. Or could have gone there, but Cooler just lands so many rockets. That is round two going his way as well. Cooler's got to be feeling good now off of this too, because he's taking the aggression that Rap has used, use it against him, and more importantly, the traps that he's setting are working for him. You can see that fantastic initial bounce and Insane. the midair and the follow-up, all for nine. I didn't even have the orb up, so yeah. it doesn't matter. He hit perfect rockets. And look, that's as lowest his heart rate has been all tournament, I think. <laughs> that's a that's a scary sign then. If he's, <laughs> if he's feeling that confident right now, and he's not feeling the stress of this match. With you know good results with Rafa and Quick Champions, I think he's probably feeling like he's in a position to uh, to win this final. Yeah. Well, let's see now. Cooler on the Death Knight versus Death Knight yet again here between these two. And Cooler just going to be slowing things down, most importantly. Look at the, the disparity between the uh, major item pickups. We do have a nice yeah. window of eight seconds, which is very viable to get through. And Cooler's already reading into this, expecting Raph to be challenging. And he's going to spot him out right there. No rockets. Exactly. Very difficult to send splash damage down a tri either, of course. But eventually, he's left alone to pick up that item. And you can see he's got a large amount of overstack. Rockets out and tentative. Edging away. Great roll from Rafa. Cooler makes his way into the lightning gun room. No commitment. Yeah, I mean, he's got the weapons he needs now, right? He's got the rockets most importantly, which in that window towards rail, he would have loved to have had to return a lot of damage onto Rafa. But think about these last two rounds, and now look at this one. Completely different styles. And these players are so good at being able to switch that up so easily and so fluently, or fluidly between the two. That's oh, a thing a of nice beauty. Push. Brilliant push from Cooler, avoiding that sort of sweet spot that Tribolt has. Edges in back, that's going to be mega health taken, but it punishes with the rail. It's very little for Rafa to work with, and he might just go through the spam. The defensive rockets are good, but is it going to be enough? Oh, these rails out of cooler. Fantastic first shot here, and Rafa's feeling the pressure. He still has the opportunity to pick up a kill here, though, with that flame strike if he can connect it. But Cooler has a pretty decent stack here, and he's showing almost no signs of respect as he's constantly trying to keep this aggression up. Going for the Mega Health instead, Rafa would have heard that rocket jump. And so he'll get free armor from it. Is Rail not quite able to punish enough? A few sevens, and that's about it. And uh, Cooler, with that decision to go to the Mega Health, I wonder if he's played himself out of control a little bit. The next rotation of items are going to be crucial. We can see, though, a lot of them doing a bit of chip damage towards each other. We have Mega and Heavy coming up in about five seconds time for both. Looks like Cooler will give up position towards Mega. Rafa actually not going to go for the challenge on a Cooler. We typically see him like to attack away when someone's picking up a major item to punish them, but this time he goes for Mega instead. He hits a great rail there, but that rocket to rail combo at a Cooler does force Rafa back. Again, you mentioned about the contrast in playstyles that we could see. This is very, very different to what we've been getting before. Rafa clearly recognized that, you know, I can't rush him. It isn't a strategy that's working. It's time to slow the pace down. Either wait for him to make a mistake or force him into one through hitting some better rockets, better rails, and so on. And what scares me now here, Zoot, is that we get closer to that time limit, to that sudden death. With Death Knights, it's so easy to get a very quick kill with your ability. Now, the longer oh. we go on, and not to mention the push coming out of Cooler right now could wow. end things here. Gets that first frag. Rafa 
He's going to be down another man yet again here, but he's going to switch over to Ranger. Well, is he going to be able to shut things down quick enough? Because Cooler on the 100-100, he's still going to be feeling fairly comfortable. But he's continuing to slow things down. Maybe he can trap in a corner. He lands the rail for free. He switches away maybe at the wrong time, but Rafa can't quite get hold of him. Mega up, heavy up, rocket jump, but Rafa misses it. There's not a full punish, and he takes the orb out just as Mega Health is picked up. Stacks are even, but the rockets from Rafa might secure this. Never mind the rail with a single One. point of health. Oh my lord, he's so lucky to have been able to survive that, but he did such a great job as well with that engagement. There's oh. the return, though. Cooler instantly going to get the kill. And Rafa again going to be down by one. I felt like there was a little bit sloppy in the fight before from Cooler. I mean, there was a some, couple of movement mistakes from Rafa, even though he managed to succeed. Oh, the rockets from Cooler. He gets a mutual frag, and that is going to be enough to secure map one in the grand final. Cooler, he's up. Were you expecting it to be like this? I don't know. Like, the, the past records show that Cooler's going to be favored in this series. He's won both times they've met in Quake Champions. He's won seven times out of ten overall in Quake. He's already off the back of a last match, which did go four maps, yes. But I feel like for Cooler, he grinds so much every day and he always plays at that high mental state that this is just another day for a practice for him. I remember in a much earlier interview, he was, he was thanking the practice of, uh, uh, of Rafa uh, on his way up to PGL and said this is a reason he's been able to step his level up uh, to the next one. So maybe indirectly, Rafa is at fault for allowing Cooler to get as strong as he is. <laughs> That's kind of thing. He's his own worst enemy for <laughs> exactly letting that happen, that right? Um, but we'll be going to Corrupted Keep next. This yes. was Cooler's choice, and Corrupted Keep did go very well for Cooler up against Kilson in the semifinal. Though. And his LG has been pretty pretty solid. His actually rail today has been really good as well. He's hitting 66%. I know there's a smaller sample of rails than we've seen earlier in the playoffs, but uh, again, it's just consistency. And for me, um, you know, looking at the matches we've had, had a Cooler, his rockets have really shined. For yes. me personally. And going on to Corrupted Keep where you're not going to have rail anymore, so you don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. His rockets become that much more deadly, especially if you can set these traps and knock you into there. Like we saw in Awoken, he set the trap up towards upper T, uh, upper T caught him with three in a row, and was able to pick up a clean kill off of that. So now Rafa needs to kind of maybe rethink his strategy here, which we've seen him try different things, right? The first two rounds, he got aggressive. The third round, he got more passive, yeah. which looked better in the end. But I feel like that download's complete. You know, he's got that terabyte connection, and he's like <laughs> ready to go into the second map. Well, I wonder if he's going to be able to play some a different style to what he's tried in Awoken, because this is also a small map. Sure, the rail isn't there, so the long-range damage that Cool has been consistent at dealing isn't going to be such a factor, but we've still got the heavy machine gun. We've still got uh, the tri-bolt that can be good mm -hmm. at zoning out. Uh, I, I, I wonder, I hope that Rafa's able to get in his head at the moment, because it seems very much the other way right now. Well, when talking to Rafa after Sirius, like he, he mentioned he specifically knew the ranges he wanted to fight Sirius in. Stay out of mid-range where yep. the LG's powerful, stay close or stay far. And now against Cooler, I think maybe he's looking at this like, maybe we need to stay away from playing far, which is why he got so aggressive. Don't let Cooler use the rail and then play off of that. LG, I don't actually know who's going to have the better LG when it comes down to it between the two because I think they're both fairly consistent yeah. when it comes to that weapon. But I think Rockets, personally, is if Rockets a machine gun, heavy machine gun, is really where it's going to count here on this map. It's better use of machine gun. Are you using it at all the opportunities you can? It, it helps so much. We are checking out the champion composition here for Corrupted Keep. I, I actually think we might get something incredibly similar. Yeah, I think I almost think we're going to see Mirror the entire time, to be honest. Oh, we've got BJ out. Does Rafa want to... Galena or BJ? thinking about it. The thing is, have you got a wild card pick? Have you got something else that you maybe saved up and you're like, mm, strong? I could pull it out. He's okay. going to go Galena, actually. He moves away from it says, maybe use that passive defensive tool yeah. if he has a chance to well, do Well, that's it, what we, we said before and he even said in his interview, the Galena, really good with the mm. passive heal that you can use off of the totem to deal with burst damage coming your way, also to mitigate damage, but he also likes to use the totem for fights specifically to have that heal on demand and yeah. have that advantage coming into a fight. So I would assume that's something we're definitely going to see out of him, but Cooler has been so accurate with his orb, he's been so accurate um, with his uh, flame strikes as well that it's going to be hard to deal with. Completely. I want to see Rafa not taking as many gambles as he did in the first two rounds of Awoken. And uh, hopefully for his sake he can get some advantageous fights going. We're moving into map number two of the grand final at the PGL Quake Open. We are on board with Cooler as he gets over to the lightning gun super early on. Look at pressure being applied from Rafa. Doesn't want to let him out of this area for cheap. But 
fades away into the nail gun room, and Cooler is given a little bit of space to breathe. Yeah, he is, and you can see he's able to collect the double 50 in the red room, and again, the pace has been slowed down. Items going to be respawning on the respective sides of the map. They're both going to retreat away to secure those. And now a battle towards Rockets as Cooler's not been able to actually take this weapon. Whether Raph has been denying it or Cooler's been faking himself out about it, it's still yet to be decided. But you can see Rafa is just spamming trap. so many Rockets. He was hoping possibly that Rafa would in investigate that room. And he didn't quite go for it. Again, heavy machine gun is already dealt. 60, 75, close to 100 damage now. And with the mega health and heavy coming up. He's not even going to use the flame strike, so he's got saved that saved up for the next fight. Rafa, he has not yet found a counter. He couldn't get hold of the lightning gun at all in the first minute. I'm curious if Cooler is going to continue denying just this weapon and not even touch the heavy side. Well, again, we, we think back to what Rafa said before. He, he really likes to ban Death Knight away, um, but he took Nyx away from Claws and from Sirius because he respects those champions on those players so highly. Coming to this, obviously, he's going to respect the Visor pick, but the Death Knight has been the bane of his existence in this grand final so far. Cooler might have just given him a chance to go with the Lightning Gun. No, he's going to cut around. Rafa not committing to anything. If he do the thing is, if he goes to the Lightning Gun, he could theoretically orb out if he wanted to. But it's whether he w or not he actually wants to use the orb for this purpose. Because you might have that downtime where you feel less mobile. He still less doesn't have heavy machine gun either for Rafa, so no real chance to contest long range like that. He doesn't even have um, tribal either. So it's going to be very difficult for him to deal with Cooler in that position, but he steals away LG. He actually orbed, he actually orbed out in anticipation, grabbed the lightning gun, and was like, I don't want to hang around here for a second longer than I need to. Try bulb there, Cooler knowing that he has the lightning gun, is like, okay, I'm happy to move over to heavy. Goes with a flame strike, hits a little bit. Whether or not it's worth it, we'll see. Just like a millisecond too late, but the LG is connecting really good, and Rafa is just being oh melted away. Cooler still has a ton of armor to work with here. The heavy machine gun coming out. Raph is just trying to escape. Looks like he's going to be able to here, but for how long? The LG once more. Mega health not up for ages, but the shotgun comes out all of a sudden. That's something Rafa needed to do. Find something that could get uh -oh. past this uh -oh. wall of defense. But Cooler's going right back into him. Heavy's still not spawned. And Rafa fades over towards the mega health, and Cooler straight off the spawn gets something to work with. Uh -oh. I don't know, that decision, the rockets, the orbs, everything's Whoa. being thrown out except the kitchen sink, and even then it might come out to play here. You can see Rafa from the high ground going to drop in, dodges so much damage with those rockets, just stepping backwards and stepping to the sides, and that's going to be a nice little double kill here. Really hectic stuff, uh, well executed fight there from the American. He's right next to the next major item that spawns. Maybe he can try and chill for just a second. But what kind of pressure does Cooler want to play? He's got BJ. His whole champion composition or lineup is able to be aggressive if they want. Zarafa's going to have to figure out how to deal with this. No rocket damage at all. Cooler will escape that from below. Thinking back to the match versus De Hang that Rafa did use, um, his his ranger play was amazing versus De Hang's BJ. He constantly had orb ready to actually escape any of these engagements he didn't want to be in. And I'm assuming he's going to be doing just that yet again. Here's going to delay the armor for a second. Going to rush over towards Mega. He knows he has the advantage, but that rocket going to pop him into the air. And that's not the direction he wanted to go. But now inside a red room, he's still yet to do any damage on this exchange. It feels almost like he's just trying to step out of line enough to force Cooler to, or to, to make Cooler think that using dual wield is the best thing to do. And then back out as soon as possible. We've got a rocket each. The second one, pretty decent from Cooler. And no commitment from Rafa, knowing now there's 45 seconds that he's got to hold on to, and he can get his first round in the grand final. That duel it has to come out of Cooler sometime soon. Mega's going to be secured for Rafa, most likely here. But can he get away? The duel's going to be used. You can see his health oh. melted away. The orb's not going to be in a good position to escape, but he almost fakes out Cooler here, who doesn't go for the chase off oh. the bounce pad, and the rocket's going to connect, and Cooler will tie things up. Oh my god, Rafa's going to be kicking himself, missing that dire orb. He could have escaped there, killed some more moments of time. But Cooler, suddenly the wind is in his sails. He might be able to push faster. BJ versus Galena, I'd say traditionally slightly favors the BJ, but I actually want to we'll get to Galena on this one. Really? Slightly. Because that, that totem, the, the immunity frames you do have while using it, soaks up so much damage. Mm -hmm. And especially against double LG, it takes a long time to burn through it. So if Rafa can play it right, and if he can hit rockets like that, he might have a good opportunity. But he has to be so careful. The totem's going to heal up quite a bit. Maybe looking for the drop. Didn't have the double 50s there to help heal up with. But that sudden death is going to be real. This is only the first round here on Corrupted Key. Yeah, that was a great example there of actually the, the immunity that you can get from the totem briefly. Stacks are identical, major items spawning at a 
Might as well be identical time, but all of a sudden Rafa actually wants to push into this. Be aggressive, be proactive in this. He is above, so he can do some damage, but the lightning gun return fire from Cooler is still strong. That's a lightning gun. Yeah, doing some work here, trying to deny him Red Room to go for the double hit. He's going to push in almost at the wrong time, but that bounce keeps Rafa away from melting him with the LG. And again, that totem, he's only using it in these fights. He's not trying to stack up to three. He's trying to use it for these specific fights and these engagements. And cool with no dual wheel still. It's just survival mode. There's enough time between the major items now that Rafa can actually get both of them. He might be right in this. Galena is going to take it down. Rafa is a round up on Cooler in map two. Looking back on Awoken, comparing it to Corrupted Keep, the style has slowed down so much. And you can tell the players are trying to read into each other. Mostly the players are trying to gain that solid control they need around the map. Rafa's tried it multiple times using that high ground to transition between Heavy and towards Mega. But he hasn't been able to get there quick enough most of the time to actually shut down Cooler. But he's going to be towards LG. Heavy Machine Gun. I'm not going to be... Actually, it will be in the hands of Rafa. No tribal for either. So if Rafa can hit these shots, he's actually going to win out on this trade in the most part. But he's going to back off in the meantime, give Cooler some room to breathe, and for him to collect some weapons. Yeah, small stalemate for the moment. No big deal. They're exactly both getting the lightning gun very early on. Rafa, he spawned the lightning gun side, so really for him that he doesn't have to work as hard to get it. Small ship with the nail gun. Nothing to be concerned about. And again, stacks as good as equal. Who's going to step a foot out of position first? Cooler does need to acquire the rockets, which is a Small thorn in his side. For me, though, like a DK versus DK matchup, I feel like Cooler has Rafa beat here. But it just fits his style more for the surprise I, attack. I find that crazy, though, because throughout the playoffs, I felt that Rafa's DK has been as close to perfect as you can get. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's contracting sti or contrasting yeah. styles. He gets aggressive with it and hits flame strikes. Ooh. He likes to play passive with it and use uh, flame strikes. So, again, I mean, we've been talking about the, the difference and the contrast of these two players, and it's only reflected in how they play the mm. same champions. Cool has definitely had his number with this champion throughout the grand final so far. We had a small battle going on. Neither of them wanted to overcommit. They couldn't feel like they had a large enough chance to win the fight individually. It's kind of like Nick's here, I feel like, between these two uh, champions. You only want to fight when your build is up. I mean, same with BJ, same with Ranger, if possible, because it's such a turning oh factor. My God. Even with uh, Mega being picked up, Cooler just shredded through it. And he's going to find some help in a second. He had the Heavy to pull back on. He did loads of damage with that weapon. You can tell he's now dancing around the map a little faster. Did he hear that bounce pad getting used? But he can't be seen first if it's in a close quarter engagement. That's the problem that he's having. If Rafa's going to play around the corners, Let's figure out how he's going to trap into him. So just look at that. Cooler was chasing Rafa, and then on a dime, he stops. Both of the players stop and just instantly go back to holding that shift or whatever button they have, walk bound to, and played slow. Like, that turning of the tide of speed you're playing at is so difficult to do, and these two players are honestly showing a masterpiece of it. I mean, it's, it's changing gears, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly as you say, that it, it, it is a masterpiece. They do it the best. They've got this far in the tournament, and if you can switch up the pace that you're playing, catch your opponent off guard, or you know, be conservative when you need to be. You're making some high, percent high percentage uh, decisions. The angle cooler is trying to hold to, just, just out of range of the tri -bolt. Again, his heavy machine gun is putting him down a lot more damage, 510 compared to 210, and he has over 12% accuracy more than him. Very important weapon on this map. And that's what we are talking about before, right? Rockets and sure. mach heavy machine gun are going to be the t big two to look out for. I'm actually surprised that Cooler hasn't capitalized off it more this round, considering how much he's done with it. He goes into a nail gun on this occasion. Rafa suffers a lot from that. He knows the mega health Ooh. next. Oh, that rocket. Can't easily chase. And he doesn't go for the mega health first. So Rafa, I think he's won the loss regest then. Yeah. I, I, sus I really feel that Cooler could have got both of the big items. If you went for Mega first, then transition to Heavy and caught Rafa at the same time, like that would have been a fight that he should win any day of the week. But maybe he felt that if he goes to the Mega Health, Rafa can get a position to block him off and then take the heavy armor. So if he's placing higher value on the armor, then so be it. We go into close quarters and Rafa, he suddenly turns it around. They decided that, that is the moment to commit. Rafa, after a fruitful first round, he is looking good, almost four minutes here. Yeah, one minute until we do have the end of round. Rafa could potentially go up 2-0 here on the choice of Cooler and Corrupted Keep. 
But again, the Dire Orb is going to be massive when it comes to this fight. Rapid trying to keep his distance. Very hard hit orb. He's not going to challenge LG. He doesn't want to get in close proximity of Cooler's Ranger unless at least he has his Flame Strike up. Is Rafa going to want to hold this position a while? Still 10 seconds. <laughs> again. He doesn't see him. He, he didn't see him just traverse that part. That fighting into instant stopping. Oh. And that damage actually is going to be enough to keep, I would imagine, Cooler away for a little bit of time. But speaking of time, Cooler is running out of it. 30 seconds left to go in the round here, Zoot. Rafa. Oh. I don't know if he was guesstimating a timing on heavy, but there's maybe a small mistake uh, happening there. But there's only 20 seconds to go, so oh, it's huge. just run, run, run. Taking a lot of lightning gun damage. And Cooler, he's going to have to commit soon. He surely can't wait for the big guy to flame strike. It does it's miss amazing. a bit. No, no, it's perfect because he can't run that direction to catch up to Rafa. He's going to have to go through the fire and take tons of damage or go the long way, which is bot Rafa. Oh, no, almost get away, but Cooler, he just catches the tail of them with the LG Second. and ties things up and throws us into sudden death. I think he used the orb in order to catch up with him around the corner. He went to heavy and said, right, I've got clear line of sight. Just get in range of that lightning gun and I can do enough damage to trickle him down to zero. And that spot's so dangerous too because you push them so fast and far away from you that you only have a limited amount of time with the LG to actually do damage. So Rafa just wasn't quite stacked enough to deal with that. All he needed to buy was one more second and now in close proximity of each other. Again, the rockets coming out of Cooler. There's a little bit of damage for Rafa's gonna jump out with the LG and Cooler wow. is falling. 15 health left. That was a lot of damage. The mega health just in the nick of time. He goes into the orb close range. He's looking for the rockets. The dodge though with the orb. The lightning gun secures Rafa the round again. That orb, man. What a dodge. Honestly, cooler as well. Dodging the LG out of Rafa there was amazing. I'm surprised. Yeah, there we go. We can see the replay. He does catch him up. He does throw the orb, predicting where Rafa was going to go. And that's got to hurt. But the thing is, if you're Rafa there, yeah, get your hand back on that mouse side because you know the game is not over. And for him, keeping that composure, losing fights that he's going to get very frustrated about is so important. And Rafa, he does it the best. I felt like that fight down by Mega was almost more insane, though, because if that direct rocket hit him, I'm pretty sure Cooler wins that fight and ties up the rounds. So sick from Rafa. The thing was, like, before that fight even began, we saw Rafa pick up the three hourglasses out the window. Well, we'll take a second. 12 oh! HP left, and he shows Cooler how it's done with his own flame strike. Um, but the window, when he picked up the three hourglasses and he backed away, he actually got his ability up the perfect time that he could force out a fight. Cooler comes back in, takes away Mega, and has the shotgun to finish off the kill. And he's getting heavy off the back of this. Oh or maybe God. not. Uh, oh, okay, well, he got it. But... He, he stole it. I mean, I like the aggression immediately um, when he spawned with Ranger and didn't want to get Rafa to get any momentum at all. But look, we're fighting again. This is going a hyper aggressive. This could go horribly wrong for Cooler. We can get a total reverse 3 0 compared to map one. I like how he's now using the Galena against the BJ to deny LG the best he can. He's sticking around this area, knowing how important it is to pick up this weapon. But he has 19 health left and he just barely skates by. Heavy in a moment. Oh, Cooler's on the chase. He's so fast with that. The heavy does get taken. The rocket sends him to down to about 10 points of health. Wait, no what? machine gun comes out. How does he escape with 2 HP? Cooler doesn't get the finish. He's able to heal up, up to 52. Cooler, hopefully not overestimating or underestimating how much health Rafa does have left. Cooler, can, he can chill a little bit. We're only a minute and a half into this round. The thing is, he's starved for resources. There's the LG push, but the rocket is incredibly clutch, knocking him off of the ledge. Mega health flow from Rafa. He can't he's contest heavy. So much. There's, no, there's nothing Cooler can do about heavy anymore. He's going to have to get this one up. And that basically gives Rafa full control of the map. One of the first times, if not the first time, we're actually seeing one player get full control of these items. And with the triple totems he did have down, he was able to refresh that Mega and that rocket. That's actually going to knock him back, knock him around. Oh really God, sick rockets. Rockets. These are mad. He doesn't have the lightning gun either. He's got dual wield available, but you can see that he's got the nail gun to the ready. Lightning gun from Rafa, again putting him down to 10 points of health. Heavy is going to be up in five, but I don't think that Cooler wants to be near there for the moment. He needs to get rid of a totem cooler because this is going to be Rafa with that much HP, yeah. which he can reapply in the middle of the fight here. As you see, oh, pushed oh, directly oh. in. And Rafa now going back to back maps, winning 3 0 for each player. This has gotten really interesting. Yeah. I don't know what to expect next. And this we're going to Vale. We're, we're going to the map now? that oh we... Yeah, we're going to Vale. We're going to the map that Dehang, like literally told us we know is Rafa's weakest map. And then when it came down to them two playing against each other, Rafa won. Maybe... Maybe Rafa's thinking that, hey, Cooler doesn't have a read on this map the same way. Because you're getting the picks picks earlier on, so you can ban later. I think maybe this is something specifically applied to Cooler. 
We'll see. I mean, he used it up against Rafa. His Death Knight has started to step up, has started to show. That lightning gun damage from Cooler, by the way. Yeah, that it's was, perfect. Yeah, it doesn't is. get better than that. I don't care <laughs> what deliberate. value Rafa says, Cooler did the best. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like uh, Cooler's LG on top was a little bit stronger in that fight. Cool, uh, Rafa ended up getting a lot more damage with it. I think it Cooler was, it did was the weird. better tracking, yeah. um, but Rafa had the better positioning when yeah, using it. He, he took the fights at the right times with LG, but Cooler was able to keep the, the crosser on the, the model yeah. a lot longer. But still, I mean, I think the story of this of this whole Grand Finals is going to be about these two champions we've seen, the Death Knights out of both players. And when we go to Vale... It's going to be there as well. Exactly. It? I mean, a lot of that what happens off the start of Vale is you spawn either a heavy or a lightning gun or something along those lines, and it's a race towards getting that rocket launcher, the zone control yeah. weapon that's fairly easily accessible. But that's also highly competitive place to be. So are we going to be seeing lots of frags early on? Same pace again as Kilson and Kula were having on a lot of the maps they were playing. I think it might be similar to Awoken. Do you think so? I think I almost want to say it's going to be similar to Awoken or it's going to be similar to CK. <laughs> so it's either going to be a really aggressive or really passive. No, I think it's going to be aggressive, to be honest, uh, between the two. Oh, Kula's going Ranger. Oh, is this going to be something that Rafa wants? Obviously, he couldn't go kill and was banned yeah, out. Some mirror match. Okay. All right, so we're expecting a lot of mirror matches, except the Galena difference. But the Galena, it worked. Like, yeah. the fights against BJ worked out for him because he was able to heal. I was really um, impressed by that. Cause yeah. I, I didn't expect BJ to be as, I don't know, out-combated as much, out-played as I hard. Think, I think at their level, it does. Yeah. <laughs> at, like, okay, I'll say my level. I'm not going to include you in this. You know, I'm going to be nice. Uh, at my level, it's a little bit of a different story. It just depends on the skill. Like, clutch. Yeah. You know, at lower levels, he's not that good because people don't know how to play him properly. But the higher levels, he gets even better because people are that good. Yeah. Well, guys, we are moving into map three. We're guaranteed a map four because the series is tied up. It's Cooler and Rafa. We start with the Russian. Death Knight, though, versus Galena. Rafa doesn't want to go for... Is he going to get both defense. items? He does, but weapon-wise, he's a lot weaker. He's gonna fly through the teleporter for a second, eventually get onto the rockets, but it was kind of costy. Oh, oh my god! He lived with 6 HP, to be fair, so it wasn't really that easy of a kill, but it made him look easy, and Rafa knows how low he is, and instantly, the Death Knights will be dead. I wonder who actually benefits most from that whole exchange. Heavy's gonna be up in a second. Cooler, he waits a long time. Lost again half the stack. All the major items that Cooler's been taking this game, which is every single one, apart from this mega health, he didn't really get much in the way of you know, boosting him in fights because he kept putting himself in a dangerous position. Mm -hmm. And again, we saw, by the way, just to reiterate what we talked about with the LGs between the two players, Rafa using it situationally way better there. Mm. Obviously, Cooler didn't have one, but you saw the constant weapon switching out of Rafa for every part of the map, every moment, every situation was on point. Nice little pre-fire with the rocket as well, and the rail. Ooh. Almost another 100-100 for Rafa. Cool, not going through the teleport, drop the mega health. Bit more tentative from him. No rail from Rafa, so harder to punish at that long range. Eventually falls back for mega health. There's now quite a large gap between the spawn times for these items. Also remember, if Rafa can win this grand final, this will be his third title of the year. He won DreamHack Tours with Dehang. That's he crazy. won Quake Con 2s with Hang, and if he can win here, he'll win his first dual tournament of Quake Champions. And within the span of 12 months, that's God, there's another two titles to add there, I think. Yeah, and there's still a wet Dreamhack winner coming up too. Yeah. So let's see. Nice little rocket oh. jump out of Rafa. Catches Cooler off guard. He's gonna go up the bounce pad another time. But for the first time of this round, Rafa will have rail. That's actually pretty sick for Cooler to still be alive. The question is, can he survive much longer? And it's answered quickly. He has just got the Galena left. Can he set up anything? Can he get the weapons? I quite like that Rafa picked Galena early on because you do need to set up. You do need to have that start where you can at least get a weapon that your opponent can't and uh, fight for some position. And to deny Mega Side too. I mean, yeah. you have the totem and the teleporters. So you kind of eliminate that sort of control, which high ground control on Veil is very, very important. And now he's going to go for the next fight. He knows he has a champion lead. He knows he has the damage and the weapons. Oh. And that's going to be Rafa taking the round. Rafa's getting better as the series goes on. It, he it really is. is. I was worried in the first map. I was really, really worried for him. Because yeah. Cooler, I mean, it was a walk in the park for him. But then he came right back. He turned the heat up to max. And uh, now Cooler, he's going to have to recalibrate a little bit. There's Rafa on the Galena once again. Sets up the totem on the teleporter exit. Already making that position hard for Cooler to fight for. 
And he's going to want to hold it as long as he can. He's getting a little bit lucky as well with the spawns coming through. Marked by LG, he gets that, goes to the teleporter, blocks it off immediately, so he maintains high ground control. He's going to concede rockets, but make, maintaining high ground is going to be a much more important in this situation. I think it'll be really smart for Cooler now to go up the bounce pad, clear that totem, and uh, prevent Rafa from being able to set up any more in that position. But he hasn't done so. The rockets are but narrowly missing the rail. There's the bounce pad, but he's doing it very, very late. Rafa, he might even push through the teleporter again and try to no, push no for more way. damage. Oh, there you go, of course, the flame strike. There's no way that's going to be confident. But he sees him go towards Mega, so he knows he has the distance he needs to stay away from the Death Knight. Flame strike does go in and doesn't connect, but that rail out of Rafa will force Cooler to play a little bit more passive now. And again, he's not stacking his totems at all. He's specifically using Galane in the no, way he had for these fights. Earlier, which Cooler had to bypass, but he did hold another for a long time. To, uh, I wonder if he's saving it to just keep at the top oh. of this, this, this part of the map. That was awkward. Oh. 32 HP is there a little bit early for Meg. He's going to have it in the fight, though. Your rockets do nothing to me. I just dodge. Well, Cooler's been, I swear, he's been like not full stack for a majority of this round. He's been having a hard time getting his HP and armor back up to full wrap and moving so effortlessly around the map, it seems. No totem still up there. Has got the tri bolt. There we go. Pops it down. Maybe a rocket jump back up. I mean, yeah, like looking at his style with Galeta, that, that totem, it just supersedes oh. any sort of totem fighting or totems in fights because if you deny that, it's it pretty much guarantees that he's going to take 75 damage if he wants to get high ground. So yeah. it's like you're either going to have to take damage to get here or you have to go up the bounce pad where I could be waiting for you, knock you back into it and kill you. So it really puts Cooler in a rough position. If Cooler loses this round, I want to pick Galena first next. I think that's one of the only ways he's going to be able to counter and properly, proper, properly, properly challenge uh, the control there. Well, now he's really limiting the control out of Cooler. He's got another one at the uh, other teleporter over towards Heavy. And Cooler again, he's still trying to restock oh. constantly. Well, if Rafa does want to push in any more and you know, secure a kill with all the control that he's getting, at least for the Cooler's sake, you know, he's not down a champion. Rafa's gonna have to get close, and that flame strike it doesn't do anything on this occasion. Cooler is pretty low, still looking for the tribal damage, but no commitment. The thing is, Cooler's not been high ground on this map yet, except the bounce pad once. And and that's really risky now because Rafa's gonna have the triple stack, he's gonna have Mega in this fight, he's gonna have the restack when he goes back up top, or through another teleporter. Like, Cooler is in such a rough spot. But again, all he uh -oh. needs is that one fight, that one catch up to Rafa to burst him down, and it might be here because Rafa's getting aggressive. He's going to have the flame strike up right now. He's got to pop it somehow, but it ends up killing himself with the flame strike, I'm pretty sure. But the amount of pressure that was being applied from Rafa, regardless, I mean, he was a dead man walking. He literally was. He's definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was getting good at these when you don't even mean to do them. Looks like he's been rubbing off on you. Or rubbing on you, I don't know. In the meantime, the Rockets coming out of Rafa with the LG combo. Oh, this could be it here. One rail can finish him off. The tongue comes in again, blocks oh. the tribal damage. And Rafa gets another frag. Shield has been put down. Get out of here. Cooler not able to do oh anything God. yet on Vale. These important rails. Already the, the, the possibility that the totem is there. It's like, oh, I can't even push through. I don't even have the health anyway. He's got a minute. Oh, oh no! No armor, 100 HP, <laughs> 90 damage rocket, plus 10 damage from the slime. <laughs> You know what that means? A oh, dead cooler. Brutal. That is oh. absolutely brutal. I've never seen something like that. That's he knocks <laughs> him into it as well. <laughs> see, he knows, he knows. It's a little cheeky look to the camera. But up 2-0, and Cooler, you wanted to see him go Galena at the start of the round. He did not do it. It's not been working for him like this, but he might have found a position. He misses the flame strike. That could have done oh so well for him. Does it take 25 damage from the flame? That's not a lot. But again, more pressure. Rocket. This is where Cooler can potentially excel. LG on LG, both of them so weak, but Cooler finally drawing first blood in Veil. Thing is that Mega, with it being delayed, it's not like Cooler can restack instantly. There's no. a good chance Rafa could challenge out on it, especially if he's able to pick up LG or pick up Rockets. It's going to be there immediately. I don't know if Rafa knows, though, that Mega was delayed. No more oh, pressure There's applied. the answer. He picks it up. She had poison, but earlier I think Cooler did get first blood, but it was so fast the return fire from Rafa that it didn't even feel like it because he immediately had the advantage. And Cooler's actually been able to stay alive. And now he might get a bit more use from Death Knight. Good rocket here from Rafa. 
is going to shut down. Cooler was just staring down a possibility to explode all over him. And even with the initial like kill that Cooler had and with Flame Strike being up, he wasn't able to maintain any control. Rapper took away Heavy. He's trying to take away Mega here as well. You see Cooler's getting up the ground. 22 HP left in Rapper. Instead of going for the Mega, he goes for the kill. Smart play by him. Really, really nice from Rafa. Cooler, you can see the way he was aiming. He switched over to the rail. Maybe he could have gotten a rocket instead. Uh -oh. We've got Ranger and Ranger. We've got Viral for both. It's a nice little rocket jump. When are the orbs going to come out? Are they going to come out? Oh, I love this. Denying the light armor first because you can't pick one up after your overstacks on the armor as it is. And now position perfectly in time for the Mega Health. Does Cooler want to orb in on it? It does spawn in a second. They both put it down. What's denying that position from each other? Rail just misses. The dodge coming out from Cooler. Sidestepping once again. <laughs> he can't quite get it. But still, Rapper certainly won that. And he might even find the shot now. Cooler's just desperate for any amount of help. There it is. Oh, shotgun, shotgun, go. and again. That is going to be one more kill. We're just getting three O's quite possibly, unless Cooler could do something phenomenal with his Delana now. This is mad. That rail v rail, by the way, I just, in my head, I was singing Benny Hill. <laughs> Benny Hill music during that one. Um, yeah, we might see the 3 0 back to back to back here one more time as Rafa on the Ranger. He's got the rock. He doesn't have LG though, so I would imagine he's going to head in this direction, which has been such a core weapon for him in this map in particular. But Cooler's been able to get Mega most importantly, so he's gotten one foot out of the grave and one foot into the map. But can he get the other one out and try to have some sort of semblance of control back into this round? I think it's actually kind of possible. Because he's already got one totem up the top. And look at that. He's using his all. Oh, that's so intelligent, Rafa. He knows how important it is to get rid of those totems on the map. And, and he's not got get a uh, bounce pad as well at the same time. Yeah. So really smart. Great rocket. Lightning gun as well. Cooler though. He's still decently health and armored. Rafa. Again, has to be careful and knows that he's probably going to have to get rid of another totem at some point and just see if he can get himself to that full natural. Pretty much there now. Prioritizing that armor as well instead of the 8 HP. Wants to be able to contest towards heavy. No, Cooler has the high ground. We've seen Rafa maintain with those sevens. And not to mention Whoa. the dire to the catch. Cooler off guard. Oh. And there it is, Rafa. He's going to be one map away here from winning the PGL Quake Champions Open. He can do it. He can win his first ever dual land in Quake Champions, denying that possibility from Cooler on the international side, should I correct myself? Sorry, yeah. Jason. Well, that's fine. No, no. Three I'm three O's, though. Three three O's. Yeah. This is, this is bananas. You know what that means? Next one's going to be three O. We're going to have two five rounders. It's going to go the full distance think so? here, I think. Well, what's the logic to that prediction? There is none. Okay, okay. <laughs> Come on, you, you've met me. Do I have any logic? <laughs> none at all. I mean, if you're saying it, I'm hoping for it. But look at that damage difference, by the way. That just shows like how much Rafa had full control. Period. I think that the Galena pick off the beginning was brilliant from Rafa. I honestly don't know why Cooler didn't catch on to that a little sooner. I think it might be one of just naturally his weaker maps. We've seen his accuracies as well. 23 LG, 23 Rail. I mean, he struggled to I get wonder, onto that. Because if we think back to Cooler playing twos and Rafa playing twos, Rafa plays a lot of Galena with uh, with Dehang as well. Yeah. Like, they both switch between Visor and Galena depending well, on I maps. Cooler also played a decent he, amount of it. He, he did with... Le no, no. So with Le no, Latromi played the Galena for him when he played with him. With Nitrino, I think he still played the Visor. I think... I th I'm trying to remember a time when Cooler did not play Visor in twos. And like he played Galena. He did like to act, behave as, as Carrie, yeah. you could say. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that discussion. <laughs> um, no, I think I think that's just kind of um, a lapse in, in judgment, a mm -hmm. lapse in experience. Because we know Rafa plays Galena. Cooler can play Galena. I'm not saying he can't. But he doesn't have as much experience as Rafa does yeah. in the competitive sense yeah. of playing her. Well, we will jump into one of the larger maps now. We're going into Runes. We've had three small ones. They've been pretty quick. This fits the way Cooler wants to play as well, if you think about it. Set up the traps with Death Knight and catch Rafa off guard. There's so many angles. He has been great on this map, actually, uh, throughout the one. They've all won their own respective picks so far. Do you see this going to a fifth? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I, I don't actually you. know if we have a 3 0 in this one, even with Rafa being on fire, winning two back to back, but I feel like this is going to be Cooler's map, and that would bring us to Blood Covenant, which is going to be ridiculous. I'd love to see that one, actually. Yeah. That map would be nuts. And who what's the last pick here going to be? Are we going to be getting a Galena? Just want to get some more aggressive. We are. Spirit matches all the way today.
I'm not hating it. I'm not hating it at all. Again, we're seeing just contrasting styles with the Death Knights. We're seeing contrasting styles with Galenas. Uh, Ranger, pretty similar, I'd say. Both looking for the Dire Orb kills and the Dire Orb damage in fights yeah. instead of using it for mobility. Um, we've seen Cooley use it for mobility once. Uh, in particular, I can think of Uncorrupted Keep, when he's able to catch Rafa on the retreat from Super Shotgun to Rocket. We saw Rafa do it um, just on the last one to fail, taking out the Totem over by Mega. Um, so both being very smart in the Ranger play and very similar, but the other champions are just night and day. I'm a little bit surprised that at this point now we've got the range, no one's picked the Nyx. Didn't get banned out after all, don't have to worry about the Visor. Is a good counter as well to something like a Death Knight, where yeah. you can dodge away from the Flame Strike. But nevertheless, guys, we are into map four here of the Grand Finals. The PGL Quake open. They're going to meet each other very early on and rocket the Flame Strike to... Tribolt is a first blood settled within 10 seconds. Wow, that was a really nice shot of Rafa too with the Tribolt. Watching from his point of view as he retreated away, an initial flame strike as well. And you can see him, he wants his control. He's going to drop down but get caught out by a rail. Surprised to see him round that corner, especially when we've seen Cooler in the past like to wait and lurk there for an instant die orb kill. And now he catches him again. He's keeping his pressure on. Oh. It's got fooled a little bit. That die orb sent him spinning completely. Cooler, he's going to be able to pick up a kill. And he catches Rafa on the drop. Over towards Heavy, he's going to spawn in one second. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, I'm, I'm going to respect that player to Rafa. You know, he went for the Dire Arbin because he had to commit to the fight. It was his only choice at that point, but of course, Avi was just about enough to do the job. Now, Rafa might want to slow it down a bit. Not much time has passed. Should be able to get onto Mega Health. Cool, I think, while he gets some other weapons, he might slowly mingle his way over to Rockets at some point. And this is definitely going to be a full oh. bad trouble. Okay, well, it didn't connect as much as I thought it would have. That's going to be incredibly strong. Rapid dropping down onto Algae. You can get some of that levitation going. Rail again. He's so stable with his aim. And if you're Rafa here, I mean... We talk about a style with Galena trying to use the totems for fights, but those are normally on maps where it's close quarter combat. Ruins of Sarnath, there's so many positions you can hide these totems that there's a realistic chance we could see Rafa get the overstack yet again, like we did see on Veil. Vale. down, he goes for everything. He tries to get the double blast going. Rail, oh, can't quite hit it, but Rafa has got enough health and now definitely enough armor. Oh my, just positioned himself outside of control. I'm curious what he's going to do from this mega health. The split as well between the items. Can Cooler even challenge out anymore as he gets tagged up by the rail? 59 HP, there's no chance that he can do that. With him shooting that totem, I actually should have told Rafa, like, hey, I can go take Mega freely, but it's going to allow Cooler to sneak in because Rafa's dropped down for it. I could jump up, but not going to connect any damage off the back of that. Oh, Rafa's pushing into this. The rocket, oh, he just hits on the ledge. He's looking for the LG now, but he's pressured too much from Rafa. With about 36 health. We're down to one champion, which is Galena versus Galena. Cooler, a little aggressive. He's only had about 20 health left, but Rafa doesn't want to finish the job yet. I think he just spotted him towards rail directly under him. Mega's going to be up in one second time, so he's going to be able to secure this one, even though Cooler got it previously. And he's trying to go for the chase here. And considering we're down to one champion each, it comes down to this last fight. This could be it here. Rafa going to round the corner, looking for the tags, looking for the track, and he's going to be able to do it, able to take the damage from those rails. And Rafa is two rounds away, Zoot. I mean, it was looking a little bit rough <laughs> during the round at certain points, but great job from Rafa to overcome all of that. He lost two champions first. How many, how many rounds is that in a row for him now? Seven in a row? That is seven. You can count. I'm, I'm good at this. It's very difficult. I'm not it's even, not like, being being a jerk about it. Like, well, <laughs> cast the map is really hard, so I'm, I'm actually impressed. <laughs> well, we are going to get double death knight off the start of round two. Rafa... Securing the heavy armor, but not super quickly. We kind of a small face-off at the beginning. Late pickup of the Mega from Cooler. Obviously going to be spotted out by Rafa. And he even gets the late damage. 30 seconds in, but you can still really feel the pressure. That's going to be mounted on both these players. Shoulders. Look at this push from Mini so fast. And Cooler has no time reacting. To be honest, this isn't the first time Cooler's been caught off guard looking the wrong direction. Yeah, I mean, Rafa was so quick. His movement was excellent. He was strafing it. Max speed, max acceleration, and getting those early shots up when he'd already landed a rail before is absolutely brilliant. All comes in incredibly close. Well dealt with from Rafa at the moment. Does he want to push him for the last bit of damage? Have to respect some of these rockets. World class before that. Now he goes for the machine gun. How does he turn that around? Rafa, maybe slight over commitment, but I mean, I would have got my house that he would have won that fight. I thought he was going as well. I mean, he had a really good stack. He had a lot of damage done on the entry, a lot of LG as well. 
to go for the rail shot because he wanted to commit towards more. But I like I like the play to go towards heavy, but cooler to, to stay composed. I think his heart rate, you know, went down off of that fight. Oh, oh my god! Oh. <laughs> that was sobbing so quick. This time, cooler's reacting, uh, reacting quickly. But it's gone wrong against Galena before. That's true. Rafa did come back, being down too. But can he do it another time? I know he's feeling confident here. We can never count Cooler out. I got Heavy as well, so his stack is looking fantastic. And more importantly, he doesn't have to worry about the Ranger or the Death anymore, right? He doesn't have to worry about being bursted down and losing the stack, so he can fight more aggressively against Rafa. Make Rafa in a second, Cooler. Small trap, he does come out in the end, but the rockets have been amazing from Rafa. He's barely lost any health. Now he can possibly fight. Totem there to protect him, but starting to edge away. Actually, quite intelligent. He's not able to get onto heavy. Cool was desperate to get in position to secure that item. And that does put Rafa slightly on the back foot, but not by much. He's got weapons, he's got ammunition, more totems that he can start to put down. Cooler, whether or not he'll start thinking about the clock, I'm not sure yet. I but he's a little he's, early. He's got to. He's got to think. How the hell am I going to get around? I can't drop eight in a row to him. <laughs> but wait, get, it's there's to more. <laughs> no, no, no I, I agree. Like Cooler has to put a halt onto this because Raph has built up so much momentum, and, and I know it's it's a word that we say so often. But seven rounds straight, you can't argue with me on this. Hmm. Three minutes in, though. We're starting to hit that crunch time for Cooler to potentially think about dragging this out. Champ versus champ. All up here from Cooler. We keep Rafa out of here. Ready? No, oh, direct. Lands into Mega Health, but still, a lot of armor has been removed. Maybe it's going to be secured. Full 175 armor for Cooler. Rafa's got two totems down, though. Oh, you gotta keep in mind of this. It's gonna be very important if we do see him pick up this frag. Oh. Cooler's done it. He's broken it. He's broken the streak that Rafa had. He gets himself around on the board. And that nightmare of seven uh, stops. That's, yeah. got, that's got to feel good, because that would be that would be haunting him <laughs> desperately. <laughs> He's really frustrated by that one. And if, as we saw from Cooler's point of view, he had no rocket ammo left. He only had machine gun. And he had no other weapons as well. Oh, he had no ability up. Uh, there was no orb left for Cooler during that fight, so I thought he was going to walk into absolute hell, but despite that, he turns it around. He gets himself a major item now in round three. But a lot of weapons. Within the first 20 seconds, get the trifecta, the rockets, the rail, and the lightning gun. Now we can just now we can just wait. Is he going to fall into the trap? One rocket. The flame strike's good as well. He has not lost much stack from that fight. Rafa is going to be licking his wounds. He's trying desperately to get onto the heavy armor, but that was one risk too many. Just blood here for Cooler. Did he just spot him? Yeah. I'm always going to hear him if at least if anything. But that rail's going to miss, and now he's low on HP. Great rail. Yeah, yeah, very, very good rail. And Rafa didn't go for the chase there either. Pl trying to play this one very cautiously. And in that last round, we did see Rafa actually get two totems down the Galena. So if he was able to pick up that frag, there was good potential oh. to turn it into a third. Shotgun Blast doing some serious work against Cooler. Ouch, man. That hurt a lot. I think he might have just caught a frame for Rafa. One rail. Again, brilliant defensive play. Is it going to be enough to help him get onto the Mega? Well, only 50 HP for Rafa. He's starting to collect the bubbles, and Cooler's able to escape with a little more stack. Yeah, and you can't challenge from upper T if Ooh. you're Rafa here. That flame strike is going to be a little bit too real to deal with. I'm not going to fall into that trap another time. Look at these little mini flicks that we're getting from Cooler. He's looking awesome at the moment with the rail, and he's, he's needed to get his aim up, especially after that nightmare on Veil. Oof. Well, we know Cooler is one of the players to have games stick around against him. I mean, we saw him playing against base and in the interview he was only talking about claws he didn't even mention the base game pretty much because that's how ingrained that match versus claws was so you would imagine the previous maps still gonna be doing the same to him here but look uh -oh, at this this uh -oh. is gonna be bad for rafa oh. well, i thought an orb could have come out as well and maybe tried to dodge the flame strike but you've got to react so quick to do something like that too quick here comes the heavy armor orb though has not been expended He's got time to do this. He actually goes in. He wants to get the heavy knowing the flame strike can't take him down. LG, however, it's way too much for Rafa to put up with. Cooler can start to take the lead in map four. I actually like that play too, to kind of let him come in and take uh, heavy, because then it gets him in a position where Rafa then has to commit to the fight with no orb. 
So it's like, hey, you're going to have to fight me, and my LG is already ready out and being used to decimate you. I think if Rafa wanted to make it work, he had to get some entry damage while like, yeah. performing that maneuver onto Heavy. I mean, that's what's come down to uh, for a lot of the players have been saying. Like, if you get that first bit of damage down mm. and, and in there in the fight, then you're looking really good. And you can see Rafa going to be caught out. The rail's not going to land out of either player. Close. Switching out on his own. Now there's going to be the flame strike. Rafa, he's on about 100 reflective health and armor left. Lightning gun pretty decent. And there's the totem deflecting some of the damage. And the flame damage over time is also now gone. And Kula was thinking for a moment does he want to get the heavy armor? Doesn't want to run down below and meet up with Rafa. And that rail is nasty from Rafa. He tries oh. to chase it down, almost gets it. There's another angle there. He is railable. Kula. Rafa's just. <laughs> If he hits that, it's the frag. It does 90 damage in total. Look at that, Cooler's wasted enough time he can get onto the Mega once again. Do you think Rafa should have stuck around a little longer? He had him locked, right? I yeah. was actually wondering, would Rafa commit to that one? Um, and If he gets the kill, though, and he's still low health, then... Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, now he's no health. Yeah, Rafa, he was just desperate to make a move somehow, chasing in the corners of the map. Maybe he could have gotten that kill down at J-Spot. Couldn't quite get it. Um, but then uh, Cooler could have spawned over at Heavy, start to take control right away on the next yeah. champion. So maybe Rafa just considered a lose-lose situation. You know, as we mentioned, seeing, wanting to see Cooler play Galena on Vale, I almost want to see Rafa play uh, Galena as first pick here mm. on Runes because he's been playing a lot more cautiously with it, which I think has been working out for him for the most part. And there's a good chance you can yeah. get that triple totem stack. It's not the same as Vale as you've got such an important position that right. you need to protect, but you've got a lot more space so you can put those totems down and get that overstack going. And he's shown how strong he is at doing that. 30 seconds in and Cooler doing hashtag Cooler things here. He likes that spot. He's got some important kills this tournament from that. Here's Omega being taken. So I'm going to transition over towards Heavy. Still missing on LG and he's actually looking very, very weak in terms of weaponry here because now he's going to be denied rail as well. Does Rafa know how weak on weaponry is? I think he might assume that he at least has a rail. Yeah, right, because he came from that position. So yeah. he would think, all right, he's probably going to have rail, but little does he know. If he's not firing see. it, though, he's like, okay, he's not even challenging me for rail angles. He might say, okay, he doesn't have too many weapons. But then again, how, how can he approach as close? <laughs> and again, you see Cooler trying to use the Death Knight towards his advantage, trying to force Rafa into him. But the Mega is going to actually push in off the back of that 17, 17. health left, though. Even with Mega picked up, 17 HP. That's how close that was for Cooler. It felt like it was a bit Kilson versus Cooler rest just then, just jumping as like, I want to get the frag first. I'm going to you know, try my luck on this and see what I can do. And that entry damage with the lightning gun, I mean, that was the difference at the end of the day. Oh, that tribal. That's some good connections. He's going to fall up as well. You can see him really sticking around. He's going to actually push Cooler straight off the Mega, and he should be able to force him back towards Heavy as well. I don't know how Cooler's going to challenge this one, especially with the low HP and I can tell you he's not going to challenge this one. Goes to the teleporter instead. And Rafa has the opportunity to go for the rock and jump up. Ooh. He's going to spot him out over towards Elgin. for the push. Knows how low he oh is. My God. And there's the second one. But again, 14 HP left. Cooler did so much damage. I don't know how he managed that. That was absolutely nuts. He's going to have the Galena. He's going to want to make an attack relatively soon. Tribal and rockets are all the weapons that he has. There's the Mega Health. One rocket, Ooh. really good. He gets the mutual what? frag, but he could not afford to lose that champion. We are two for two. There okay, is championship the point right now for Rafa. If you're oh, that that hop back, he jumps in to to fake and to faint. He's gonna go towards Mega, jumps backwards instead, and gets a clean angle with the shot. That has to be so frustrating. Yeah, he did die in the end, but still, that little bit of footwork was fancy as hell out of Rafa. Cooler's back against the wall. So I guess a spawn, allowing him to pick up the heavy armor first. We'll be happy with a lightning gun and a rail and cooler. Is he going to work his way towards the lightning gun? He is. But Rafa lets him go. He doesn't hold the angle too long. Most importantly, Cooler does have the unholy trinity of weapons, most importantly, when he was limited just to the rockets and the machine gun in the round prior with his first pick. He's put a lot more emphasis on this direction. I wonder if Rafa's going to take another jab at going in for an aggressive flame strike move. He knows he has to hit it. He's been incredibly accurate, consistent, and landing damage. But it's about getting a small amount of entry damage in itself. If you can hit a rail, Cooler's going to have to know that that's a possibility. And we saw how Rafa ended the series versus Sirius. It's an insane multi-rail, so he's not afraid to make moves like that.
Yeah, I asked him, like, why'd you go for that? And he's like, I was just feeling it. I was just feeling the moment. And people, again, to reiterate, people forget how damn accurate Rapid can be. Like, they always talk about his mind, but they forget about his hand and how good he is. And you can see right there why oh, he's so good. Route. He's not going to push in. He's got a stack advantage for the time being. Is it enough to warrant pushing? The flame strike is still a threat from Cooler. I like that they're picking at each other. The thing is, no matter what stack you're at, you always can never underestimate how much damage the flame strike does, and that's why Rafa, I think he, he gives so much respect. Not only that, but oh. the die work and both of them get great connections. And Cooler, he survives on five health. That was absolutely insane, those rockets. How he delivered on that. We're going to have an orb straight back up. Paul has still got health. He's going for the vertical LG and manages to pick up the frag regardless. How is this guy clutching it so hard? He looked like a fish out of water when he was in the mega room, and I don't even know how he did that above rail. Tell you, man, his rockets are solid, and he's, he's proven right here for all of us at home and for us here in the studio. But now he's one frag away from taking us to our fifth and final map in this grand final here. $50,000 on the line, $25,000 for first place, and a lonely 10 per second. <laughs> it's a big difference in, in change. Great entry rocket in the second as well. There's going to be another. Flame strike comes out. He looks for a direct. It's a bit of damage, but Rafa world. is coming back into this round. Gola is not home safe into a map five yet. Look at that. Blood cover the fourth map. Could be a great tiebreaker. However, Rafa's got other plans. Oh, oh, he doesn't see him. He just rounds that corner and doesn't actually see Cooler. Tucked away towards that light armor. Either way, oh, now he's going to know what that totem being destroyed. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, no, he's committed too much. He wanted to get the heavy and then Albright out of it, but it didn't work. Cooler's got just one oh, champion no. He's going to catch him. Uh-oh, uh-oh. This could be it. It could be all over at the moment. There's a totem there to help him out. He goes out with the pummel, but Rafa's going to do it. He'll take the PGL Quake Champions open. And Rafa's gotta be happy about that too, Zoot. He's only had a top four placing in the entirety of Quake Champions when it's come to duel, and now he's got his first title under his belt, and more importantly, three titles in this year. No one can deny it's the year of Rafa as he's gonna lift the fantastic trophy, Damn. and he has to be so happy about it. He must be buzzing, I think. Best player in the world right now. That's what we're looking at. Yeah. I, I again like he he grinds so hard and in general he's he's a shining star within the community. The time he takes to give back to the community by ending a stream by doing 20 minutes of AMAs, streaming his scrims so people can learn how to play better. He puts in the work, everyone's thankful for it, and now to get that victory under his belt, he has to feel so good. That's gotta be a relief the time he's put into it this weekend, the uh, the games that he's had to go through in order to get the victory, you can see that relief. You can see it just falling off of his shoulders. And we can welcome back as well our lovely Jahar over here. He's getting emotional here too, you can see. Matchups, intense maps, we didn't quite go to the full five, but as, uh, as I was very happy to note, it wasn't a clean sweep either. Yeah, and it, the funny thing was, it was four maps, but it was all three O's. Yeah. Or sorry, it wasn't a three on the last one. That was my bad. <laughs> Kula did take a round back. I, mis factual. I miswrote that down. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was three two down at yeah, the three end. Yeah, three two. I mean, uh, Kula, he was, it, two, he was two champions up on the, at the end. Yeah. Threw it away, some crazy aggressive moves. And, you know, he was getting away with murder with some of the frags that he had. Here's the stats over here for Ruins of Sarnath. And as far as accuracy goes, I mean, it's right up there. We've been looking at consistent LG and Rails all day, but here things look a little bit low just because like the amount of spam, prediction shots, paranoia shots, just making sure he might not be there shots have really been the story of Cooler and Rafa. And look at the damage difference as well. A hundred between the yeah. two. Like a hundred and fifty eight. Yeah. Like that's insane considering how one sided some of these rounds really were. Like Cooler did a lot of work and every time Rafa did get those kills, it's not like he got them cleanly. He got it with like 13 HP remaining constantly. Yeah. He was always having to work for every single frag that he picked up. No, it was back and forth, back and forth. And he's, he must have felt like, I have to shut this down now on ruins. I can't believe how he 
the way in which he won that final round was absolutely unbelievable. You could see the moment, though. Like, the moment he knew yeah. he won the grand finals was that final chase <laughs> from yeah. J-Spot. He knew with the LG. He's like, I got this. Like, this is this is my victory Pummel to win. Out from Cooler Exactly. Well. Cooler conce conceded. He knew it was over. So he, Cooler gave away that frag at the heavy, and then the spawn, he just played the spawn. He's like, I know there's a, there's a likelihood that he can spawn on this side. I have to punish. I can take the victory right now if I do this right. Yeah. I mean, this has been such a fantastic tournament. It's really the first opportunity where we can really have everybody under one roof. Uh, we've had land tournaments for Quake Champions Duel before, but this is the first time we can really say, hey, there's nobody really missing. There's no really asterisks added to, uh, to you know, why somebody won over somebody else. And of course, going up against Cooler, who 2 owed him earlier in the weekend, who 2 owed him last year. Uh, this has got to feel amazing. And this is like not a tournament with, you know, um, like being in the U.S. and we couldn't have some people participate. This was the most stacked tournament yeah. in existence in Quake Champions. And there's no denying that, that Rafa is the best dueler in the world now. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, every single one of these matches was so intense. But we saw that edge of respect from both of these players. We didn't see just DK v DK rushing each other too much. You know, Veil of Nath notwithstanding. And with all these replays that we got as well, we can see the amount of clutch shots that we have to deal with. This is possibly the only map that uh, Rafa will forget, but I'll, it was exemplary. <laughs> it was absolutely exemplary. I also, I mean, just really quickly, want to do obviously give a shout out to Cooler. Uh, I know Rafa won Definitely. the whole thing, but Cooler, like the grind he's put in, the time he's put in into this game, and for him to get second place now, you know, to kind of have some sort of relief in, you know, some sort of, you know, gratisfaction in that time put in is really good to see. And I hope to continue to see him grinding away like this. I'm sure he's still be plugging away to get at some point a first spot for himself. He's going to be home streaming for like 10 hours tomorrow. Like, <laughs> he's not going to take a single day off, I bet. Well, you're absolutely right there, Jason. I mean, the fact that the final came down to these two who have been, you know, Quake legends in their own right in previous titles and previous years for quite a long time, actually. And in Quake Champions, not quite getting to that point where you, you reach that level you really want to, to see. But uh, now we saw the final, and now we get to see Rafa actually uh, take away the, the trophy. And what a trophy it is, really. Yeah, and you saw the emotional moment it was for him, too. Like, he was sitting there, and he had to take a second. We saw, as you said, the sigh of relief come in. We saw the realization <laughs> that he won the tournament. Um, but like you said, he realized that before the last frag happened. Yeah. Well, he, re he realized that he won, but then actually to be standing there with the trophy after kissing it, like, I, th I thought he was almost in tears, actually. What was on the trophy? I mean, after he kissed it, I mean, is it spicy or something? <laughs> <laughs> what? Maybe is it made of chocolate? Who knows? We'll have to ask him. <laughs> but of course, it all came down to Ruins of Sarnath. So many fights down it's in the heavy armor room. And uh, yeah, I mean, we were expecting that to go to a fifth map almost. And it's just closing out of this frag over here. There's a small error made from Cooler, and absolutely, he's so stacked. He capitalizes by finding him off the spawn, just as we mentioned. And you can see Cooler's like, I've got nowhere to go. There is nothing I can do. <laughs> Look at that reaction. <laughs> I'm actually kind of glad we didn't get to hear that one. That might have blown everybody's eardrums. Yeah. <laughs> and here <laughs> in a puff of smoke through movie magic, we've got the man here himself, Rafa. How you doing? Dude, I'm, I'm feeling fantastic. Serious, I, I still struggle to smile at the end of tournaments sometimes. Thank you. <laughs> That's yours. Thank you. That's yes. yours. Um, but no, this feels, this feels super special. I, seriously, you guys just hit it on the head. The best players were here. Like, we were all putting in the time. There were so many good players here. Like, the shape that they were in, um, the road that I had to go through to win this. And for me, it's really special to play Anton in the final again. It's been seven years now since yeah. we uh, played that IEM final. And to be able to play it and to win in that fashion um, and just how strong he came out in map one and how I had to adapt over the set and how much it pushed me like mentally to stay strong and not to like, you know, it is sometimes easy to tilt when like, you know, somebody gets away with low life or, and then they end up getting control from that or whatever, but you just can't think that way and you just got to keep plugging ahead and, it's just an amazing feeling, man. I don't really know what to say. <laughs> and, I've of course, last year uh, we had another 0-2 with you and Anton uh, a little bit earlier on. But, of course, so much has changed in the game since then. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I didn't really get to ask you earlier on, um, you know, after the, uh, the, the games a couple days ago. But uh, today um, it was a very different result from when you met earlier this weekend. Yeah, we uh, at least I, I banned Visor instead this time, and I tried to go head-to-head -head with him with his strategy and just try to outplay and out-rotate him. Um, 
And you could see it wasn't working at first, but then like slowly over the course of the game. I, I think the biggest thing that caught me off guard is he has certain dodging techniques that others don't, and you have to play it to get used to it. And he opens up really random shots that other people don't take, like uh, uh, that one round on Corrupted where he's just shotgun sessing me, where I think I'm safe and like he's going to go somewhere else, and then I take more damage and I can't return. And, you know, nobody else has played like that. So trying to adapt to those things and, uh, you know, improve on your own game on the fly was really, really difficult and uh, compared to the other one. But I'm glad I managed to do it. I got to ask this, though. I mean, being a veteran of the game, being a veteran of competitive esports in general, do you ever get nervous? Uh, yeah, I was a little nervous after. I wasn't nervous when I was machine gunning him, when he had like five life on, Sar on Sarnath running away to Rocket as Ranger. And then like as he's chasing me down as I'm running to Mega and I'm tracking him, I just didn't hit anything somehow. But then after that, I was like nervous. I was like, yeah, I could have ended this and like gone up and had a lot of momentum. And now he's got like full control because I, I had an unfortunate spawn with uh, after that fight that allowed him to get everything. Mm. So then, you know, with Ranger, you, you get the Dire Orb back quickly, he has all the guns. And so then it's really tough to come back from there, especially when I lost, uh, I had no Death Knight and uh, no Ranger then. I had to just use Galena. Uh, but otherwise, not too much. Other oh the one the one fight where I thought I heard a footstep <laughs> near the eyeball, and when I caught him with the flame strike in LG, and then he managed to like flame strike direct direct me. Yep, that was nice. Uh, I was feeling a little nervous like right beforehand, but I still executed well. He just hit everything he had to to come out of that because he was only 100 100 compared to like my 300 stack mm -hmm. or whatever. So. Did yeah. You won seven rounds in a row through maps two, three, and the start of four. Did you ever at any point feel that, I mean, with no disrespect to Anton, that this is getting easy? Because that's seven rounds in a row. That's a lot. Did you ever feel like this is in the bag? No, no. Every every round that I had to, to win was earned, like, on those maps. And I just knew, just keep my head in the game, keep trusting my gut decisions, like, you know, play smart and then make the right reads. And just trust in it. And just keep going with that. Don't get too cocky. Mm -hmm. um, like, don't try to overextend, you know, and push too much because, like, with, you know, with the fact that Death Knight and Ranger were in the game, if you over push one time and they get that telefrag or they burst you down with Flame Strike, it can change the game. Actually, talking about, uh, like, push maybe over committing sometimes, it felt like at the beginning on Awoken that you were kind of testing the boundaries a little bit with him, at least in rounds one and two, mm -hmm. where you were going in for making some aggressive plays. It wasn't working out. Was that just you know, your downloading yeah, phase. Yeah, I wanted to, uh, I was trying to not allow him to get set up because when he gets set up as Death Knight, it's so difficult to, to take him out of that. He can he plays parts of the map very well and he knows certain traps that'll work based off sound cues, which I've noticed compared to other players. And uh, so I was trying to avoid that right away. Even if we didn't get the kill, I was trying to like burst damage so he'd have to run away and then I could get control of the center. Um, and then I noticed... Uh, Near the end of the game, I, I played Awoken a little too stale. I didn't try enough unique angles sometimes, and there was too many of, like, Mega is close to Heavy, and I'm taking the same route too many times. So uh, over the course of the next maps, I tried to change up and uh, really be unpredictable. And I want to uh, to bring back to something that DeHang said um, when we talked to him before you two were supposed to duel each other yesterday. He was saying he wants to choose Veil vale against you because he thinks it's one of your weaker maps. Clearly, I don't think that can be ever said ever again <laughs> after looking at the last couple of days. Um, veil vale with Galena, the start. That was some of the best like Quake I've ever seen. And can you kind of explain oh, why you. you chose her in the beginning? Uh, I chose her because if you get the LG side spawn, you get control of high ground right away. And I think that that is more valuable with the totems and being able to restack, as you saw, like there was sometimes I was able to get the triple totems up and it, if he happens to take high ground from me, then it's not a big deal. Like I'll get it set up somewhere else or um, just keep constantly locking him out of, out of the map and uh, just try to punish heavy then. And I think that's, it's super powerful. Um, and I mean, the chant, we mirrored each other. All three of those champions work very, very well on that map. Uh, and again, I, di I didn't play Keel, but that's because he banned it this time. So, I was thinking about playing it if he didn't because he seemed to struggle against it a little bit, but um, I felt that these three champions were the ones to either completely decimate an up-close fight or use mobility with Ranger, control high ground with Galena, that type of thing. Like, Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I felt really strong on that map for like the past month, so I don't know who thought I was weak on this map, but 
I'm, well, not, I'm glad it thank wasn't. You. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't a, a, a nasty memory. But staying with kind of the opening of Veil there, where things were really zany and really crazy, I think it's clear that this isn't, especially compared to some of your games with Evil, mm -hmm. it's not a solved game. There's still a lot to to learn, a lot to iterate on. I mean, between players and especially with maps and champions, what do you think some of the biggest things are there to uh, to polish up just from y your own gameplay point? Well, I think the game itself is going to change from patch to patch. It's just how the nature of the game will be. Uh, you're going to have champions with abilities and different stacks and stuff. That's how it's going to be. Uh, I think the biggest thing to note is how much better players got with tribolt angles over the course of the, the tournament because then you start watching the competition. You start finding something that somebody's doing. You're like, wow, that's actually really nice. You know, that failed me in the last game because I didn't use that for, as an opportunity. Thank you, Agent. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Agent, uh, Avec showed some good ones in the Cypher game on Blood Covenant, like, you know, and then there's some other ways, you know, that like routes players might take when they're out of control. And I think the biggest thing that'll keep changing is starts. Like Cooler had like the biggest change up in starts. He constantly tried to keep you off balance with what he was doing. Some rounds he would pick up the item right away. Other rounds he would d delay it, whatever. Like a lot more so than what happened in Quake Live. Like he's really trying to mix it up every single round to throw you off balance. And um, I actually respect that. It was very, very difficult to deal with. Um, and I think going into DreamHack Winter, you'll see more of the same uh, whenever the new patch hits and uh, we start practicing for it. And not to mention now, looking at this entire year for Quake Champions for you, you've won three major titles. You won Tours in two on two, you won QuakeCon on two on two, and now you've won PGL. How are you feeling coming into DreamHack Winter? Are we going to see four and five come in? That's the plan. <laughs> I, I, I know it's no guarantee. Uh, I'm very fortunate with certain things that happened in this tournament, even though I felt I was playing at some of my best Quake that I've ever played. I still had some things that went my way, and I think... Uh, I think like Cooler said in one of the interviews, in this one, you have, you have to take some more risks because of how um, the stacks work and that you can sit on 100-100 and then you don't have to do anything for a while, right? So you have to find ways to push that guy and uh, just keep him weaker and weaker and not get trapped out. Um, so I'm going to be practicing just as hard as I did for this tournament, but uh, hopefully I can keep up with the stamina because it'll be two versus two and one versus one. So trying to make sure that I balance out the practice time for both. That'll be the challenge for myself. But, uh, you know, I'll definitely be coming to Europe early again and uh, looking to get in good practice right before the events. And, yeah. I am curious about something you said actually at the start of the interview. You talked about how it's so good to play with Cooler in a final again. Is this something that you think about before the f this final or actually any match against players you have a history with? Do, do you think about it during the game, before or after? Yeah, sometimes I let just like little different things try to motivate me to like stay hungry and stay focused. Um, like I said, uh, when you guys asked me who I preferred to play, I said if if Kilson managed to make the final, I'd like to, you know, get revenge from Gamescom, you know, that type of thing. Just try to use it as you know, motivation to don't slack off at all, mm. keep 100% in the game, don't think about past deaths or whatever, and yeah. And speaking of that, I didn't want to, because I asked you when we were in the break, um, like, was there any matches I was missing when I was trying to collect the history between mm -hmm. you and Cooler? And I didn't want to say the actual, like, record when it came down to it, but in Quake Champions, you were 0-2 zero, uh, zero against him because you lost him at QuakeCon. Yep. But overall, it was 7-3 in favor of Cooler. So over, he, like, like, over Quake, all the yeah, games. Yeah. Over all the games. And now you're able to take this massive victory here. It has to feel really good. I mean, I didn't want to put that idea in your head before you played, but to, like, oh, kind of no, think okay. back on it now, you know, um, it's a match that he's consistently been winning. It's when we've met in tournaments early... I've normally been fortunate enough to win again. Like, so if we meet in group stage or like early double limb bracket, come back in the finals, like I've finally hit my stride. I barely managed to edge it out. Because, yeah, I, I think, actually, I think it's four. I think it's two IEMs, the one game's come, semifinal. I'm just going to uh, trust you on it. <laughs> you would know better than me, to be honest. But Do you he, think does, he does have the better track record against us. Even in some, like, uh, when I've gone early, uh, he's beaten me in some online cups right before, like everybody would practice before a big EU tournament. Um, but I just try to show up for the big ones. That's, <laughs> you know. This certainly was a big one. I mean, we saw three days of competition. Do you think there was anything uh, particular to this tournament that was really conducive to this level of play? Personally, I think this tournament format that was here, how it was run by PGL, 
the fact that you have your own computer the whole time, it's span across three days, so anybody coming in that needs to get rid of that jet lag across the course of the tournament can, as long as they keep progressing. And there's, everything was just am amazing. It's the way that things should be, you know, when you're trying to allow players to have the best atmosphere to play at their best. So I'm very pleased with it. So. I mean, speaking just, of the atmosphere, it, I mean, it definitely is a different atmosphere. There's, like, no giant crowd to like, barge you. You have your own, like you said, PC mm -hmm. area. And the relaxation area, the sofas out there, was really nice to just sit down and, and chat with everyone and have a very chilled tournament, you know? Yeah, it's a nice change-up. I, I really like the events that have a lot of people. Um, it's, it's something special to play, like, a difference between playing in a studio for a final and playing on a big stage in front of a bunch of people. But... I think it is easier on the players to just be relaxed and you can actually spend some time together and hang out sometimes, you know, where some events you really don't get to just based off of the schedule. Right. But yeah, I like both of them and uh, I don't know. I just hope more keep coming. Well, now you have to get ready for a DreamHack smoke machine, so it'll be a little bit of a different <laughs> atmosphere. But the donuts are pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so, again, congratulations, Rafa. Um, sure. I, I do want to open up the opportunity for you to say anything else you would like before we, uh, we get to partying. Uh, just thanks so much to Team Liquid for the continued support. Uh, it really, really means a lot. All the fans out there watching Quake and uh, cheering us on, uh, not just myself, but all the other players, um, you know, we, we really, really do appreciate it. And Quake's something special, and I hope that this can continue for years to come. Yeah. And it's tournaments like this that allow me to get some viewership Amen. back from you. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I don't know. He I'm just won. He might keep that viewership. <laughs> uh, yeah. We'll, we'll host later. It's all, all good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, but I think that'll be it from the PGL Quake Champions Open. It's been three days of madness, and it sets a precedent for competition in the future, which will be right around the corner. Again, I want to thank everybody for watching, everybody for playing, and if anybody's out there who would like to get into LAN events like this, well, they happen more and more often, and that open word is uh, becoming more and more open as well. So we'll see you either on stream or here in the studios ready for the next match. But for now, everybody have a great evening or morning or whatever.